What is up, fellas? Hopefully all is well. Texas A&M stiffed. Just what does Texas A&M have to do to gain some respect? Polls. I'll tell you what we got to do here in week nine. We got to beat the shit out of Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska. Just, ugh. I didn't record last game. I felt like, you know, we're going to be doing multiple seasons of this and whatnot. So playing Texas Tech, I know it's a rival, but barely squeeze that game out. Um, this A&M team is kind of showing a little bit better in the second half, uh, down by 10 or so in the second half. Hold them scoreless in the second half as well. Nice win right there against Tech. Going to Heisman watch. Mario Manningham right now atop of it. John David Booty, one of the best names ever in college football. Wide receiver number 22. I don't remember who this is at Bama, but the man's balling out. Halfback number 23 for Oklahoma, who Oklahoma is number three in the country. Texas A&M 7-0. Our Aggies are 7-0. And 12th in the country. Really haven't played anybody, though. But, you know, fuck the pollsters. We don't give a shit about them. Whoever gives a shit about pollsters, whether it's, you know, political pollsters or whatnot, those people can fuck off. It's all guesstimations if you actually look at that shit. And in this situation, it's going to be a guesstimation. We're going up against an also 3-0 Team Nebraska, part of the Big 12 North, easily the class of the Big 12 North. Nebraska, a beast of a team. Their quarterback, I know... They're it, kind of think of Nebraska, you think of uh, Ron Dwayne and shit, Heisman winner, a team that attacks you with their offensive line, big Corn Boys, which is now part of the Big Ten, which makes sense with the Corn Boys, but corn-fed offensive line, they kind of run the ball more focused. However, this season's the complete opposite. Um, just this quarterback is getting things done. I think he has 25, 26 touchdowns, only three interceptions for Nebraska. He's balling out in Nebraska like it. I showed you just a second ago, only one loss on the season, I believe. It was to Oklahoma. Uh, but now looking at the recruits, uh, it just looks like this team uh, for Texas A&M is just balling out. But however, though, it just doesn't seem like the recruiting is matching up with it. No commitments yet. Um, just, you know, A&M's not one of those, you know, t big five schools, big ten schools, if you want to say. Um, not the conference, but just thinking of just the Blue Bloods of college football. Um, there you go. Not number 12, but number 16 in the country. Number 14 in the country, Nebraska, hosting us. It's going to be a huge game. This is going to be the game that A&M kind of puts themselves on the map when it comes to... I know, hey, it's hard to say you're not on the map when ESPN has you on the cover, but uh, when it talks about being on the map, being on notice compared to other teams, Steve McGee is having a well of a season. This rushing attack, it kind of seems A&M's got quite the balance, especially since a lot of the production has been through the passing game. Uh, but you got Javorski laying still, a guy can get you 50 yards. It doesn't matter if it's on 20 attempts. He hasn't been quite efficient. Um, but fortunately enough, we got Mike Goodson for the change of pace, a man that's been putting up tons of touchdowns. Great playmaker, but there it is. Quarterback number three on this team. Third in the conference, but however, one of the best quarterbacks statistically. 25 touchdowns on the season, only three picks. He's at home. He's got this team that's ranked better than Texas A&M. They've only had one loss. Lee Corso is with this team. Fuck Lee Corso. We're not here with Lee Corso. At the coin toss right here, I always pick heads. Fuck it. You know, who cares? Just pick the same thing over and over again, especially when it's 50-50. But we're going to lose it. And speaking of losing it, I think this Nebraska team just wasn't on page with this quarterback obviously one of the better quarterbacks in the big 12 and possibly the country but they were just dropping passes at will it seems like um, however though that is a catch on that one nice first down on the play it's gonna be a nice run right here by hatback number 33 i'm totally kidding right there i just had to show you how obscene it was to see that huddle um, pretty much just hold him up for five seconds but it's gonna be fourth down now and it's barely going to graze by it's gonna be three points nebraska getting things done on the first drive. Not quite a touchdown, but they do make do of winning the toss right there. Three to zero, and then right there, just Javorski Lane hasn't been all too efficient. The man's not very fast, but however, though, this offense is predicated on what has been an excellent season for Stephen McGee, and speaking of, throws it to his sophomore tight end, Martellus Bennett, 6-7 target, and speaking of another big target, Guy that's recently come of his own, wide receiver number two. Not the best player, I'd have to say, overall in this receiving core. It's more so wide receiver number eight. But if you're seeing a little bit more production out of those two dudes, especially to help out Steve McGee, 
with Mike Goodson and Martellus Bennett. It only makes this offense even harder to control. And while I say that, it seems like this Nebraska defense is controlling this offense quite a bit. And however, though, it's going to be an injured hand. It's his throwing hand, too. I'm not going to say the crowd goes silent, considering we're on the road against Nebraska. And then Gerard Johnson, a man that came in and just did exceptionally well against Oklahoma State last time out. Great game, over 100 yards, but he's going to get about negative 5 to negative 10 yards on this sack. Nebraska's feeling it. And Domigan Sue, just the sophomore redshirt at the time, gets a part of this sack. Might be a half sack, but they don't count that shit in video games. And then a wonderful run right there. Bulldozes over the defensive lineman. And this has been a solid defensive line. And on third down, nice play action. This team is definitely pass first, and you're seeing it. They've been highly productive at the beginning of this game. Another catch by tight end number 85, another first down. And right here with the first quarter almost over, it's going to be a fumble, and it's going to be picked up by Mr. Harrington. Nicely done by this Texas A&M defense. I know they get a decent amount of pressure on their guys, and it's going to be not intercepted. That shit scared the living shit out of me. And on this one as well, a flag pulls up on the play it's going to be holding on the offensive line so what was almost a scare ends up being pretty much scared straight as it's going to be yards behind on the penalty but it's going to be a first down one of the most efficient i think it's the most efficient team in the country texas a&m is on third down and now you're starting to get the likes of the running game going javorski lane two straight first down runs i mean that's a guy that once he gets to top speed it takes a while to get to top speed. However, once he gets to top speed, things get going. And thank God that this Nebraska defense is playing well because not only did they get that fumble on that one, what ended up being a catch-22 for this team is that their defense started playing very good defense against their own defender who picked up the fumble as it prevents him from getting all the way down the field. But on third down, not able to convert. And what a spin move by Mike Goodson. We talked about him. Behind Javorski Lane, technically, you know, you do you want to utilize the big man when it comes to running ISO, when it comes to running with at least a one tight end, two tight end sets. But the playmaker out of the two of them has been Mike Goodson this season. Gets a flag on the play, but they have one of the best kickers in the country in number seven right there. Seven to three, Texas A&M up, but it's going to be right before a nice run by halfback 33. Very dangerous to see production in the running game going up considering how good this quarterback is. If they can get that running game going for Texas A&M, there is trouble for this team. It's going to be another rushing first down. 7-3 to three still moving down the field, and it's going to be a nice, nice catch in what was a Dilfer's dime down the field on the left-hand side, and it's going to lead to six more points for Nebraska. It's going to be Nebraska's second lead of the game. We have seen three lead changes now. And we're now actually seeing a dangerous offense in Nebraska start to kick it into gear with the running game. Eight rushes, 53 yards, just under three minutes to go here in the second half. And then Stephen McGee's going to get picked off. The momentum is all on the side of Nebraska. What is Texas A&M going to do? A team that is has one of the best fan bases, one of the best home field advantages. But hey, they're far from home here in Tornado Alley in Nebraska. And right now a storm is hitting Stephen McGee and company down 10 to 7 with just a rare turnover we've seen by Stephen McGee through the air. Guy who's done a decent job of not throwing picks, but fortunately enough, a very good defense with Texas A&M. And however, though, it's going to get blocked. And the shitty part about it, bad luck. It's going to be considered a turnover towards A&M, only for another touchdown now. Nebraska, 16 to 7, just bad luck. But however, though, A&M has blocked a ton of field goals. So eventually, you're going to have to see that kind of stuff take place. Not everything's going to go for you, especially when you're in Lincoln, as this team is going to go up 16-7. to But this time, it will be recovered on the blocked field goal. It, it, ball does not lie. Another block right there by this Texas A&M defense. 16-7 to at this point, and maybe a little bit of momentum shifting. A little bit towards Texas a and M side, but still held on pretty well by Nebraska. And then Stephen McGee on this one. What might be another highlight play? Almost intercepted again, but he does take quite the shot. First down here on the conversion. 21 yards when only one yard was needed. Only 97 yards. Remember that, fellas? 
only 97 yards at this point with just under a minute to go in the half. And Stephen McGee is going to throw it to his man. Wide receiver number five. I think statistically he might be the best performing wide receiver. And <laughs> speaking of statistics, it's going to be a record broken. That tells you just the rich history of Texas A&M quarterbacks. As 20 passing touchdowns sets a record. Uh, I think we know Johnny Manziel does a little bit of his own later on. But here it is. A&M does pretty much set up the two for one. As you see in basketball terms, um, as they get the ball first in the second half. And I, I think you're just seeing an offense right here. Fran Chaboni is going to come in. No games being played. As right here, beautiful toss. And it's going to be Mike Goodson. There's not many guys you're going to be seeing to catch up to this type of player, especially with his top speed and his acceleration. But again, just bad luck for the Aggies. One of their best offensive linemen, especially that strong left side of the offensive line. And you see it right here. Just gives up the left side right after that. But he will be back for next game, though. He's going to be out the rest of the game. Left tackle number 71. But A&M takes a lead. I believe it was 13 straight unanswered points now at this point and this defense is starting to get a little pesky compared to this Nebraska offense that we've seen play so so efficiently in the first half and it's going to be A&M ball again another first down for Texas A&M we talked about their efficiency we talked about just the playmaking ability of Steve McGee and you see it right here beautiful broken tackle after what was a great great wear play by Mr. McGee and it's going to be a touchdown for Texas A&M Lucky play. We saw the bad luck earlier, but you can only hold your luck for so, so long, especially missing easy, easy catches by this offense in Nebraska. This defense is starting to fold against Texas A&M, and we saw how they played well against Tech in the second half. What is happening already is a very, very strong start for this offense. And, you know, also, too, the defense is playing well for Texas A&M. They are now up by 11. Nice first down, though, that this defense gives up going to be a play action play they're going to throw it to their man fullback number 35 and he's going to get a, another first down right here but as you see a drop pass on the previous play but it's going to be a nice tackle on third down just everything covered down the field by the Aggies nicely done I just don't see very much athleticism by Nebraska on the outside to be able to use their speed to get up the field to make up for those yards to get the conversion and now A&M this offense that has just been balling out continuing continuing to march down the field what a huge play wide receiver number two we talked about martellus bennett six foot seven this guy's six foot three he runs about two ticks of the second faster than martellus bennett i know he's about 50 pounds less but he's another big target for stephen mcgee and company and stephen mcgee another first down run still up by 11 at this point and Stephen McGee's going to throw it out to wide receiver nine, make it another touchdown pass for Stephen McGee. That should be a penalty. We'll have to see. But it's not like A&M gives a fiddler's fuck. We're here to win the game. We're here to tell the pollsters they're full of shit. They get paid way too much money for what they do since they, you know, half the time they don't know any better than the people that watch on the TV. Nicely done. Stephen McGee having a well of a second half. Make it now up by more than twice as much as this Nebraska team and there you go an all user pick beautiful play by strong safety number nine he's actually going to find himself in the award semifinalist last 12 players remaining for the Thorpe award and you see it a ton on that play nice catch right there on first down or for a first down and then Javorski Lane's going to find himself pretty much untouched as he gets into the end zone make it 40 to 16 remember fellas it was 16 to 7. It has been 34 unanswered points by Texas A&M, undefeated Texas A&M, and surprisingly undefeated. We don't know what we're going to see from them heading into this season, but Franchiboni, new coach, getting things done. As this Texas A&M team is going to create another turnover, this secondary. I know it's the front sevens, you know, yardage-wise, that's been giving up just very little up front. But also, too, tons of turnovers caused by this secondary as they just continue to set up this offense. And this offense, uh, just barely. A little bit of bad luck, but no one's going to bitch about it all too much. Stephen McGee, beautiful pass after that one. Just this beautiful touch in this game. And this is one of the prettiest passes you will see. The beautiful touch gets it down the field. Toe-dragging catch 
by wide receiver number eight. Make that four touchdown passes by Stephen McGee. I believe that's three in just this half. The man has been highly efficient since falling down 16-7, to and Texas A&M is shutting these fans up now, up by 32 points. It's going to be a huge run, the largest run of the day by halfback number 33. But just this defense, just the amount of times this Haggy defense is going to tell you fuck you is just, that's a prime example. The man is just off to the races, but again, the awareness that you're seeing built off of these safeties, this time by free safety number 26, chasing him down. And what we're going to see right here is those kind of hustle plays are going to lead to preventing any bit of points as not only does he chase him down, he gets the reward for himself. Beautiful interception. The momentum leads him out of the end zone and just immediately <laughs> sends these fans home. Goodbye. Goodbye, fellas. I know you got to make your way over to Country Road 302. I don't know fucking how to number that shit in Nebraska. But it's, you're going to have to head home out of this game. Texas A&M, beautiful Beautiful win. He injures his leg, though, however. Learning lessons on this one. It's another third down conversion for this offense. But Texas A&M, player of the game, 15 for 23, 313 yards, four touchdowns, and also about 50 yards rushing by Steve McGee as well. I mean, we talked about the polls not giving Texas A&M much credit. What is, what is the Heisman committee going to do with Steve McGee? We're going to see a game against Kansas next week. I will not be recording that. But it will be Oklahoma after that game in Kansas. A lot of visits for them. We'll have to see about the commitments. As always, fellas, take it easy.